Suzanne Pochette, a seasoned actress whose career spanned decades, left an enduring mark on the entertainment industry. Whether it's her memorable roles on the big screen or the small one, Pochette's work resonates with many. One might wonder which performance or project holds a special place in your heart. Was there a particular moment that etched Suzanne Pochette into your memories? As we reflect on the contributions of this classic Hollywood actor, we invite you to share your cherished memories and personal experiences in the comments below. What stands out to you when you think of Suzanne Pochette? Your stories add depth to the appreciation of her craft and legacy. We would love to hear your thoughts and memories. Share your experiences below. Childhood friendships often shape a person's life. Suzanne Plachette, known for her roles in TV and film, shared a close bond with Faye Michael Newell and Carla Champion during her early years. Faye Michael Newell, also known as Faye Mayo and Carla Champion, widow of Gower Champion, were Suzanne's childhood friends. Tragedy struck Suzanne's life when she passed away less than a year after her husband, Tom Poston, left this world. The close proximity of their deaths adds a poignant layer to Suzanne's personal story. In the realm of career decisions, Suzanne made choices that set her apart. Notably, she turned down roles in The Dick Van Dyke Show and its later iteration, The New Dick Van Dyke Show. These decisions, though divergent from mainstream opportunities, reflect Suzanne's distinct career path. Suzanne Plachette's life, marked by friendships, love, and professional choices, offers a glimpse into the layers beneath her public persona. Her connections and decisions, both personal and professional, contribute to the narrative of an actress who navigated the complexities of life and career. Suzanne Plachette, known for her roles in TV and film, faced personal challenges in her journey. Alongside Anne Bancroft, she embarked on the journey of motherhood. Bancroft welcomed Max Brooks, while Suzanne, six years younger, grappled with the inability to carry a child to term. In the realm of cinema, Plachette shared the screen with Veronica Cartwright in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds and later in episodes of Will and Grace. Both actresses took on maternal roles, with Plachette portraying Karen Walker's mother and Cartwright taking on the role of Jack's mom. Before gracing the silver screen, Suzanne Plachette began her career in theater, demonstrating a seamless transition to film. Her journey through these mediums showcased her versatility and depth as an actress. Suzanne's life unfolded with personal and professional nuances, each contributing to the narrative of an actress who faced both triumphs and challenges. Her connections on and off the screen weave a tapestry that offers insight into a life. Originally set for the lead in Sex and the single girl, Suzanne Plachette faced a twist of fate as Natalie Wood took on the role. Notably, this wasn't the first time Plachette found herself stepping into Wood's shoes. She had earlier replaced Wood in Rome Adventure after Wood dropped out of the project. While her career path had its share of turns, Suzanne Plachette's contributions were recognized posthumously with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The ceremony, held on her 71st birthday, saw attendees like Dick Van, Bob Newhart, Marsha Wallace, Nancy Sinatra, and Tina Sinatra, who accepted the honor on Suzanne's behalf. Beyond her established roles, Plachette's audition choices added another layer to her career. She tried out for Faye Dunaway's role in The Thomas Crown Affair and Jacqueline Bissett's role in The Detective, showcasing a versatility that stretched beyond the characters she eventually portrayed. In the intricate world of Hollywood, Suzanne Plachette's journey unfolds with unexpected twists and moments of recognition. Her career, marked by diverse roles and significant acknowledgments, adds depth to the narrative of an actress who navigated the complexities of the industry. Interred in a family plot at Hillside Memorial Park in Los Angeles, California, Suzanne Plachette found her resting place between her two late husbands, Tom Gallagher and Tom Poston. The actress, known for her roles in TV and film, had a unique connection with family even in death. Not just a familiar face on screen, Suzanne Plachette was also a cousin of John Plachette, extending her family ties beyond the spotlight. Her familial connections added a personal touch to her life, showcasing a side less known to the public eye. In a notable achievement, Suzanne Plachette made history as the first and only female non-singing, non-comic guest host of The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson in 1962. This milestone marked her presence in the entertainment landscape, breaking traditional gender roles in late-night television hosting. 
From her final resting place to familial bonds and groundbreaking moments in her career, Suzanne Plachette's life resonates with unique facets that go beyond her on-screen persona. Expanding beyond her roles in TV and film, these aspects offer a glimpse into the actress's life, showcasing a depth that transcends the spotlight. Known for her roles in TV and film, Suzanne Plachette had a unique connection with her favorite cigarette brand, Pall Mall. Renowned for reportedly smoking two packs a day for about 40 years, she made a significant decision to quit after a cancer scare in 1998. In the realm of missed opportunities, Plachette was considered for the role of Jennifer Hart on Heart to Heart, a part that ultimately went to Stephanie Powers. Another notable turn came when she turned down the role of Lil Mainwaring in Marnie, a decision that paved the way for Deane Baker to take on the character. Beyond her screen persona, Suzanne Plachette's life unfolded with intriguing choices and moments. While her association with Paul Mall is well documented, her consideration for iconic roles like Jennifer Hart and Lil Mainwaring adds another layer to her career. These decisions, along with her resilience in quitting smoking, showcase a pragmatic side to the actress, offering a glimpse into the lesser-known aspects of her life. Very good friends with Madeleine Rue, Suzanne Plachette formed a lasting bond with her during her career. Their friendship added a personal touch to Suzanne's life, showcasing connections beyond the entertainment industry. Met her future husband, Tom Poston, during their joint appearance in the Broadway comedy, The Golden Fleecing. Despite their initial encounter, Suzanne and Tom didn't tie the knot until more than 40 years later, illustrating a unique and enduring connection that unfolded over time. During the filming of her guest spot on The Fugitive, Suzanne Plachette experienced a complex romantic episode. Falling for the show's star, David Jansen, who was undergoing marital issues with his wife, Ellie, Suzanne engaged in a three-month affair. However, she made the tough decision to end it when Jansen delayed filing for divorce, navigating the complexities of love and commitment. These aspects of Suzanne Plachette's life delve into her relationships, both personal and professional, adding depth to the narrative of an actress who navigated the complexities of human connections and emotions. went against the advice of her agents by accepting television offers when she was a burgeoning movie star. By the early 1980s, her career had devolved exclusively to television. In a career marked by unconventional choices, Suzanne Plachette defied her agent's counsel. As a rising movie star, she opted for television roles against their advice. By the early 1980s, her trajectory had shifted, focusing solely on television projects. This decision, a departure from the conventional path, shaped a significant phase in her professional journey, emphasizing her willingness to forge her own unique narrative. Was the producer's original choice for the role of Catwoman on the Batman television series. When negotiations broke down, the role went to Julie Newmar, who made this her own. Suzanne Plachette's connection with iconic roles took an intriguing turn when she emerged as the initial choice for Catwoman in the 1966 Batman television series. However, negotiations faltered, leading to Julie Newmar stepping into the role and leaving an indelible mark. This episode sheds light on the unpredictable nature of Hollywood casting decisions and the paths not taken, showcasing the dynamics that shape an actor's career. Designed linens for J.P. Stevens & Co. from 1969 to 1980. Beyond the realm of entertainment, Suzanne Plachette showcased her versatility by designing linens for J.P. Stevens & Co spanning from 1969 to 1980. This lesser-known aspect of her career adds a unique layer to her multifaceted journey, illustrating her ability to extend her talents beyond the screen. From television to designing linens, Suzanne's diverse contributions reveal a woman of varied skills and interests, leaving a mark in unexpected domains.